Hey girlies, this is Belinda with the Southern Scribe, and as promised, I'm going to do a really quick tutorial on how I get richness on my coffee stain papers. Now, this is not coffee staining 101, this is coffee staining 201. It's the next step. So, if you're a complete beginner, you can still learn a lot from this really quick video, but um, if you need help or suggestions, just leave me comments down below. I'll be glad to help you out. What I'm doing here is I'm starting with a page that is already coffee stained because we're going to go from here. We're going to take it up from this to something like this with a lot more color and a lot more richness. Coffee staining is the basis of journal making, um, especially vintage journals because the more stained your pages are, the older they look, the richer they look, and they add, I think, real value to um, the books that you're trying to make and if you're selling them that's something that you want so you won't mind taking the time to do this all right so the first thing you're going to need is coffee ink this is coffee ink and you're going to make this yourself see how black that is and i'm about to tell you how right now i'm sharing secrets so listen up you're going to use regular coffee for coffee ink. I use instant coffee to coffee stain just like everybody else does. I buy regular coffee. I buy the generic brand of both. There's no need to spend high dollars on coffee that you're going to use to color paper. Um, so I'm using the great value or generic, whatever your local generic brand is of coffee. I'm going to take about two and a half cups of water, put it in a saucepan, and I'm going to add between a fourth and a half a cup of regular coffee and start simmering on my stove. Bring it up to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer. I'm going to simmer for about 30 minutes. You can leave the lid on. If you take the lid off, it gets concentrated a lot more quickly. Then, with um, a couple of sh uh, pieces of cheesecloth, I lay them in a sieve. You know, if you don't know what that is, Google it. They'll show you a picture. It's like a colander, only with tinier holes. It's made out of mesh screen. And I pour the coffee through that to remove the grinds. Um, I'll show you later on what I do with the, cr the grinds to even get more color, but that's Coffee Staining 301, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Now, um... The coffee ink will keep in your refrigerator indefinitely. I store mine in just a fruit jar like this. And the way that you make it do that is you add, once you've strained it and allowed it to cool down, you, you know, you pour it in your fruit jar, you're going to add about a teaspoon of rubbing alcohol. Um, that prevents mold growth and it will pretty much keep indefinitely. And I also use it to stain laces and fabrics that I want really grungy color to, okay? So <clears throat> here's what we do really quick. You're gonna need a paintbrush, your coffee ink, and your already stained coffee paper. You're also gonna need a heat gun. I have a craft heat gun, but I love my Wagner. And I know they're a little bit more expensive, but if you'll talk really sweet to your husbands, most of them already have one of these somewhere in the tool shed. And you can use this because it dries the paper so quickly after we do what we're about to do. We're gonna take the regular piece of paper and we're gonna take a paintbrush, any paintbrush will do. And I'm going to swirl it in the coffee ink and start laying down some color. The great thing about this is this coffee ink is darker than the coffee you used to color your paper originally. So it's gonna add another layer of color that's very important if you want grunginess or a really old feel to your page now i just added some random blotches of color here but now here's the big part saturate this brush it should be dripping see and i'm going to make a few puddles just like this and i'm going to take my heat gun i know it's kind of loud but it's not that annoying and i'm going to begin to dry this paper I can move those puddles around where I want them. And when I get them in a spot that I like it, I hold the heat to it. I still move the heat gun. I just don't push the color, like you, the puddle, like this. I hold it on top of it to make it stay in that one spot. Moving the gun back and forth so that I don't um, destroy the paper. You keep moving, you keep moving. Sometimes I'll concentrate in a little spot, but never for more than a few seconds. 
because you're gonna have a disaster if you do with this kind of heat gun. And see when it starts to dry, you get the irregular mottled edges around these blotches, plus the color is a lot darker than what you already have on there. Okay? Then, let me turn that off. And be sure to have something to put your heat gun on when you finish using it, because that metal tip barrel is as hot as fire. It will burn you and it will burn whatever table you put it on. I use an old pan that is so stained with art supplies and ink that there's no way I could ever clean this. So I put my heat gun in that and put it on my table and I don't have to worry about destroying my surface. All right, when I flip it over, see how some of the colors are starting to come through? That's great, but I want even more, you know? So I'm gonna blotch it up. And I know that most of you have probably noticed when you coffee stain paper, one side is darker than the other. That's because one side touches your pan in the oven uh, and makes it darker when you're doing it. All right, if you don't like that, if you want more color on this lighter side, just give it more color all over like this. You can use a bigger brush. You could use a foam brush if you wanted to. But I'm just, you know, putting color where I want it. And for my fellow journal makers, who have had some art classes under their belt, you know, like I have. If you haven't, don't worry about it. You know, maybe we can do enough tutorials together that you don't need an art class. But um, balance in a page is important. It's important when you're working on your cover to have artistic balance because it's pleasing to the eye. And it's important when you're um, just on the coffee stain of your paper because you want an evenness that draws the eye like for instance I don't want you know there's I don't want one blotch here and the rest not colored that's not pleasing to the eye now there is a time and a place to use negative space um, but that's not color staining 201 either so maybe we can do that another time all right but see it's dry you don't think that it's dry because the color is so much richer now you know and I just did that very quickly I would take the time to really put this color where I want it you know that was just a quick demonstration if I wanted a few blotches I do a few blotches I could even take this coffee ink and pour it in a saucer with a little bit sit another coffee cup on it like this and get ink on the bottom put it on my paper and press down and it would make one of those nifty little coffee rings you know that so many people try to imitate but this is how you add color and you just keep working with the page until you have it like you want it until it's grungy and you keep in mind that you are going to add stamping and you may add envelopes so every page doesn't have to be artistically spectacular you, you just want to add another layer of richness and I think you can begin to see, like especially on this side, as I'm drying the colors like this. Now watch, this is another little trick. I talked to you about scorching the paper. Sometimes that can play to your benefit. I'll do it again over here. Look how much richer and darker that little spot got. And when the paper cools, it's going to be fine. I can use it. Now I don't want to set it ablaze, but I do want that richness. So that's it. You keep moving back and forth. It's really simple, but it's something that you may not have thought of on your own. And you can play with pages and add, you know, color wherever you want it in whatever design you want. Um, sometimes I come back and put it just on the edges of my pages so the edges are darker. But that's how you do it. And it's with stuff you, if you're already making journals, you've already got this stuff. So it's no added expense. If there's anything else I can help you with, just leave a comment below and we'll see if we can't do a video on it, all right? I appreciate you and have a good night. Bye-bye.